Welcome to This Week on the Farm. Over the next hour, we'll be bringing you plenty of stories involving all of your firm farm favourites at this crucial time of year. We have got expectant donkeys, brilliant bulls and more sheep than you can shake a shepherd's crook at. And as well as bringing you stories from here at the farm, we'll also be finding out what happened when Rob, Dave and the rest of the team took part in one of the final country shows of the year. Could they bag themselves a prize? We've got ducks, we've got chickens, Ruth showing the Shire horse. It's going to be a family affair with a few friends along as well. Friends of Highland Bull, what a superstar. Yes, you are too. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> oh, and talking of superstars, we will be checking in with Farmer Joe. He is such a little character as he heads off to his first auction. Oh, you're a natural. You could end up buying a flock full. Now then, remember Orchid the Shire Horse way back when? Well, Rob and Dave have been desperate for her to produce another foal, so will it finally happen as she returns from the stud farm? The mare like Orchid, we really want to get as many foals out of as possible because uh, we think she's something a bit special. All that and much more coming up on This Week on the Farm. Well, of course, no visit to the farm is complete without catching up with our two farming heroes, Rob and Dave. Nice to see you, lads. How are we? Really good. Good, Jules. Thank you. Good. Very busy time of year for you, and always a nice time of year in the farming calendar, because when you think about harvest festivals, it's a chance to come together. Twelve months ago, we couldn't even go to a livestock market. We certainly couldn't go to a show. All these things are to look forward to now. We've got to be very sensible, we've got to be careful, but there's so much optimism out there now that things are going to be better for the next 12 months. But let's be honest, lads, you know, a year ago, none of us would have thought that we might get the chance to revisit some of our favourite country shows and enjoy all that sense of community that goes with them. But this year, some have come back online. The big one for us, Jules, is, the, is our local show at Penniston. It's only five miles away. We get together with all our mates, we take all our best livestock, the whole family came along. We had a wonderful family day. We all got together, we went in the beer tent and we just had a fantastic time. Well, no surprise, we had our cameras there to catch up on the preparations as these guys and the rest of the gang here at Cannon Hall got ready for the big day. But frankly, it was not without a few mishaps. Go oh, girl. Oh, yeah. Good lad. It's just a few days till the Penniston show. The Nicholsons will be out in force, representing the farm and showing their livestock. What do you oh, think? I love him. I love him. Beauty, in it? But this is about more than family pride. There are serious prizes at stake. I think we've got to just clean it up. And our professors of quackology are betting the farm on this lot. We've come down to Mill Farm today to help my niece, Katie, choose a duck and a drake. Now, a drake is a male duck, yeah, and a duck is a female duck. Ducks are ducks, let's face it. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> oh, heck. These are the Mariah Careys of the agricultural world. So, this is going to be a day of talent wrangling and diva behaviour. Right, so the two drakes. Yes. First, they need a male bird, and the boys have called in Rob's daughter, Katie. Come on, Nelly. Go with Uncle Dave and granddaughter Nellie for extra help. That one. Keep darker, your eye on that one, Dave. Keep your eye on that it's one. It's the darker head one that we need. Come on, Dave. The one on the left. It's that one. No, it's not. That one, that one. This one. No! Oh. That's a duck. <laughs> Set it on ducks. That one at front. This one. Oh! oh. We could do with Pip the Sheepdog with these, you know. That's it. We've got him. We've got him. There we are. Right, we've chosen our ducks. It's time to go back to base and give them a good scrub. <laughs> Hello. How are we feeling? Hey. Meanwhile, Ruth is with Blossom the Shire Horse. Good girl getting in some plaiting practice before the big day. I'm really happy with how Blossom looks at the minute. Without the braids in uh, and the colours and everything, she looks fantastic. Uh, I'm really chuffed with her. And we were a good girl, aren't we? <laughs> She's just got to behave on show day now. Last one. Oh. 
It's ready for you, Dave. Here he is. Oh, come on, then. The boys are back at the farm where it's bath time for the ducks. And that is easier said than done. Oh. <laughs> Cheers, fella. Oh, he's oh. Looking, look at this, he's loving oh, yeah. it. He's loving yes, it. Yes, please. <laughs> look at it, look at Good lad. He's batting himself, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, fella. Oh. Dad Roger has got something a bit special. Come on. A Dutch spotted, a sheep breed that's new to the UK. <clears throat> right now, he's getting a makeover for the show, a kind of animal glow up. And farmer Kate is on hand to keep him extra comfy. We're just glad he's not a long fleeced breed because they really take some brushing and some grooming. So he's got quite a short fleece. So as long as we're making sure all this whole straw and hairs out, we should be okay. Just finishing touches, aren't we, lad? You're going to look very handsome. Talking of very handsome, here's Ted. But how do you wash a ton of prime Highland bull? Carefully. It's going to be a busy day tomorrow. My dad's showing the sheep. We've got ducks, we've got chickens. Ruth's showing the Shire horse. It's going to be a family affair with a few friends along as well. Thank you. I think we should have the ducks in every show. What <laughs> characters? They're so funny, aren't they? Uh, these are Indian runner ducks, uh, and they're, they're the perfect pet, I've got to be honest. The, the joy that they showed when they got in that water and they were washing themselves was really lovely. Well, we'll be finding out how they, uh, Ruth, Dave, and the rest of the gang got on at the Peniston Show later on in the programme. Needless to say, they did quite well. Don't spoil it. Give the game away. As well as that, we'll be checking in with Orchid the Shire Horse. Is she finally up the dust yet? Come on, Orchid. It's a good year for it. All the cool kids are getting pregnant this year. <laughs> and we'll be finding out how our favourite young farmer, dear Joe, got on when he visited his first auction. I nearly needed the toilet because I was so excited. <laughs> That's all still to come. See you soon. Rob, Dave, Jules and myself are surrounded by a herd of donkeys. I'm not imagining this. You've had loads more donkeys recently, haven't you? We're having one a week at the moment, Helen. We had Little Princess, who featured earlier in the series. Yeah. Uh, Shirley was born the week after, who was doing really well, a lovely natural birth. Tulip here has given birth to this... <laughs> <laughs> Is that Gary? <laughs> it's like the call of the donkeys. Yeah, we're prolific. Tulip here has given birth to this little male donkey only three days ago. It's hard to believe he ever fitted inside her tummy. Come back, mate. Um, Come so back. it's all go at the moment. It's, uh, it's certainly a donkey farm. And has this little fella got a name yet? Not yet, no. We're, we're trying to think of a really good one. Uh, we had a miniature donkey born uh, just last week. I've called it Rita Eora. <laughs> so I want a cool name for this little donkey. <laughs> what about the chances of you two naming your new child? I'm going to call Vito on that, so... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, why don't we let the viewers name this donkey? Send us your suggestions for this donkey's name via social media. We'll consider the best one and then... You will name it. Fantastic. Well, as we have already alluded to, we are surrounded by lots of other pregnant mums here in the barn. But, of course, the million-dollar question now is, has Shire Horse Orchid finally joined the club? Well, it's time to find out. There's nothing that Rob and Dave would like more than to see Shire Horse Orchid back in fall. Not just because she's a fan favourite, but because Shires, as a breed, are at risk of dying out. There have been multiple trips to the stud farm, but scan after scan has come up blank. So looking at that, I would be pretty confident in saying she's not in full. Well, that's a real shame. 
Well, that was nearly a year ago. Since then, Orchid has been back to the stud farm in North Yorkshire, and this time, things are different. She's pregnant. This year's been difficult because we've had no Shire fall born. Uh, to think that we're looking forward to one next springtime is going to be brilliant. Yeah, it definitely gives the farm a boost. You know, everybody's, like, psyched up for the birth. Well, let's hope it all goes well. Hiya, Bill. The boys have returned to collect orchid from top Shire horse breeder Bill Bedford. So you got there in the end with orchid then, Bill? We got there in the end. It was a long road. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> She's all scanned and uh, vet were happy with her, so... Excellent. So uh, a job well done and we're really, really grateful because a mare like Orchid, we really want to get as many falls out of as possible yeah, because uh, yeah. we think she's something a bit special. Yeah, I don't blame you. She's a decent sort of mare. Yeah. Come on then, lads, let's go see you. This is the first time the boys have seen Orchid in months. Right, lads, Orchid's in here. Oh, she looks well. Yeah, she's in good condition. No, no. Hello, Flower. I'm so pleased we're going to get another fall. Every fall counts. A hundred years ago, there were a million shires in the UK. Now, there are fewer than 3,000. They're fairly scarce of the shires. They're very thin on the ground. It's, it's a good thing that guys like yourselves are taking up the game. Going back in the 1960s, 59, 60, there were five falls registered in the stub book. Yeah, five. It was nearly gone out of fashion altogether, the shire. The stallion that served Orchid is a big lad called Double Trouble, and he's got all the traits Rob and Dave will be looking for in their fall. Bill is the complete package. He's a great horse. He's been a great horse for us. And this is one of his lads, is it? This is a yearling colt. Well, that's only one year old? One year old he is, yeah. And wow. It stands 17 hands now. 17 hands yeah. at one year old? That's five and a half feet at the shoulder. It'll be well into the future before we find out if Orchid's fall also turns out to be a giant. Oh, she does look well. Now, though, it's time to load the mum-to-be and head for home. Good luck. Good girl. Go back. Go back. Good girl. Good girl. Safely back. And there they go. Orchid wastes no time getting reacquainted with the other horses. Knowing that we've got falls to look forward to absolutely caps it off. It's just the result we wanted. It's going to be an exciting springtime. Well, here she is, having a little bit of lunch. I don't blame you, uh, Orchid. Good for you getting stuck in. We're also joined by Yorkshire Vet Shona. Hi there, Shona. Hello, hello. So you're going to do a procedure on Orchid today, but before she does it, Rob, talk us through why we need to do this. Right, well, Orchid's come back from the stud and she's been scanned in full. When she left the stud, she was pregnant. Now, occasionally, shires can reabsorb the, fo the fall and lose them. Uh, we want today to make sure that she is pregnant still, so Shona's going to do a blood test and just confirm things for us. Why a blood test and not a scan, Shona? So whenever you're scanning horses, there's, a, there's some degree of risk to the mare, and there's a really good blood test that's accurate to tell us whether she's pregnant at this stage. Will she feel this? I mean, she's such a big animal. She's, she's going to feel a little needle, so it kind of feels like a flybite to them, really. I mean, she looks lovely. Dave, to be honest, it must be nice for you to have her back on the farm at last. Yeah, she's, she's always been one of my favourites and, uh, you know, it'd be great if she's in fall and, you know, a fall for the spring. <sighs> what a good girl. She didn't even flinch, did she? She was good. She just was munching on her hair. So, fingers crossed then, hopefully by the end of the week, hopefully some good news. Thinking time for next week's show, Jules. Well, wow, there's an update. Yeah, a cliffhanger waiting to be revealed. Come on, Orchid. Come on, Orchid. Well, it is lovely to see her back. Lovely to see you again as well, Shona. And Thank boys, we'll catch me. up with you later on in the programme, I am sure. Now, of course, as we know, it has taken many, many years for Rob and Dave to build up their collection of animals, but one young farmer is starting virtually from scratch. Yes, regular viewers of This Week on the Farm might remember Joe. When he was two years old, he became obsessed with tractors. By the time he was six, he was growing and selling his own vegetables. Now he's turning that hard-earned cash into a way to expand and grow his own herd. For nine-year-old Joe, farming is far more than just a hobby. He's gone from veg to fully-fledged flock, 
and his collection of animals is growing alongside his passion for the job. Oh, Basil! He's got too much power. His latest mission is to bag himself a four-horned Jacob's sheep, but as he's a novice at sheep shows, he's come to get some advice from his old pals, Rob and Dave. Tomorrow we're going to Melton Mowbray. Uh, it's a big sheep sale, over 700 sheep entered. Joe just loves anything like that. He watches them on my phone, on the live auctions, but we've never been brave enough to go before. With plenty of years' experience between them, Rob and Dave are hoping to impart some hard-won wisdom to young Joe. Hello, how are you doing? Hiya. Hiya, Joe. Are you feeling excited already about going to your first auction? Yeah, because it's my first time, really. Have you thought about what your bidding technique's going to be? I'll hold my ticket up. That's one really good way to do it, but if you want to be really crafty, do this. <laughs> oh, oh, he's that, got it. Yeah, that's a good way. He's wig. got it. Do that again, Joe. Oh, you're a natural. You uh, could end up buying a flock full. Joe, going to an auction is a magical experience. You'll love it. I just hope that you're successful and you have a really enjoyable day. With Rob and Dave's advice under his belt, Joe's ready for the big day at one of the biggest and busiest livestock markets in the country. Melton Mowbray Market's been trading for over a thousand years, and with so many different breeds of sheep at the auction, Joe only has eyes for his four-horned Jacob. But winning her might not be easy. So we found what we're looking for, and there's only one, just one in the whole of the place. The pressure's on. With such a lot riding on the sale, Joe and Mum have enlisted the help of steward and breed specialist Carol. Good morning. Hi, you Carol. must be Claire and Joe. So, Carol, she's got these two lovely rosettes behind her. Yes. Can you tell me what that means and is that going to really, really make Joe dig deep in his pocket? It's probably going to affect the price, I'm afraid, definitely. And she's won her class. And then she's become champion Jacob. I'm going to wish you very best of luck for your bidding. And I hope you get it. Will you watch us, Carol? I will help you, don't Thank worry. You. Joe's hoping to buy the Jacob from money he's made in his veg store. But will his budget be big enough? So the sale's about to start. Lots of mixed emotions. Like Joe's only nine. His pocket's only so deep. There's some men here, big, deep pockets. So, we've got to be realistic. <laughs> Super sort of a four horn Jew there. Champion Jacob from the Gorin family. Where do you want to be? That's 200. Joe's up against stiff competition. <laughs> 200, 220, 240, 220, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, 330, I nearly needed the toilet because I was so excited. <laughs> With his prize back home, Joe's got good news to deliver. Hiya, Joe. Did you get it? Yeah. Brilliant. Wow. Well done. She's came first and she's the champion. The champion in the whole show? Congratulations. That's fabulous. Well, Farmer Joe never ceases to amaze us. Can't wait to see what his next adventure is. But still to come, from one young farmer to another, we sent Reuben Owen over to Hertfordshire to find out about a new farming craze that really is a cut above the rest. As well as that, we can look forward to finding out what happens at the local country show because the big day has arrived. Ruth, Kate and the Nicholson clan, they've dusted off their finest, they've brushed their teeth, but can they win over the judges? We'll have to wait and see. See you in a few minutes. I'm not sure that's your best angle, babe. <laughs> Well, 
welcome back. Now, as you can see, I'm carrying this very heavy bag of feed over to Farmer Ruth. Oh, you're a star, <laughs> superstar, Jules. Ruth, what are you doing here, and what do you want this for? Well, what I'm going to do today is introduce the calves to corn, so we're going to start the weaning process. What we need to do now, we need to put that bag of feed into the calf feeder, where mums can't get, calves can get. Right. Let's then. crack on, then. Right, so... let's go, if we go down here... You make it sound very simple. It is very simple, Jules. <laughs> Right. Uh, so what we're going to get, if you just push that in here, Jules. There we go. If there you just go. tip that in there. All along. All the way along. Come on, girls. Now then. Ruth, this is good for the calves, obviously, because they're getting bigger and need more food, but it's good for mum as well, isn't it? It is. If we leave the calves on and they pull too much milk, then it, it takes all the nutritional value from the mum and then the mum gets really poor and really depressed. So we need to get, make that break for them. Now, they would do this naturally anyway. They'd start leaving them, but all we're doing is just providing that little bit extra food. That's all we're doing. Oh, here we go, Ruth. I think you've... You, oh, look, look, look. at this. Look at this. That's brilliant, isn't it? You can see now why this really simple feeder works such a treat. It is. I mean, that's what we want. We want the calves straight in there, but the mums cannot get in. So as much as the mums will try, they cannot get in there. The calves can, they are the only ones that gets in, so they get the benefit of the nutrition. So, Ruth, this is what you wanted to see. Absolutely excellent result. Well, I think now the bull has arrived, it's probably our cue to take a closer look at what actually happened when you and your mates did finally get to the Peniston Show in the hope of bagging a few rosettes. It's the day of the Peniston show. Whoa. And though it's just down the road from the farm, on, pick it up. there's a lot of last minute rushing around. Oh, they look well done. Come on, come on, Tom. Come on. The sheep are loaded, we've got Ted and Blossom to sort, and we're on our way. Okay, well done. Off we go and see how we do. Off we go. It's done. Ted's the last one in. We're all ready to go. Let's hope we get a few rosettes. And maybe a first prize for that tie too, eh, Dave? <laughs> the Peniston Show is one of the biggest agricultural shows in the country. There are dozens of trade stalls, thousands of visitors, and some serious livestock competition. Ted the Bull is going in the best Highland class. He'll need to be well turned out to impress the judges, so Dave's got his work cut out. And though it's early, he's already feeling the pressure. The stress is building up in here. I've got a lot of back combing. I've got to make him look his best, so... Time's running out now. <laughs> Elsewhere on the showground, Ruth's putting in the finishing touches with Blossom. I'm quite nervous, but I'm very excited as well. I'm just happy to be out with her. Um, what she does in the ring does matter, but winning is not the end game. It's a going out and experiencing all these things. We'll see what we do, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Don't we, babe? The show fields are packed and the serious competition is underway. How are you doing? Time for Ted the Bull to strut his stuff. I do actually need to groom him. This is a calming little brush. It keeps him calm and uh, hopefully he's going to behave himself. <laughs> the judges are taking their time over Ted. It's a good sign. And it looks like he's in with a rosette. Got a reserve champion, extremely pleased with that. We're up against really good competition. So next year, there's always another year. <laughs> Over in the poultry tent, Rob's daughter Katie is about to find out if her ducks have made the grade. Oh, Stormy. Stormy. Yeah. She looks well, but she hasn't placed. Never mind. So no rosette for... No rosette for Stormy. It's better news for Ruth and Blossom. And in second place, from Cannon Hall. Thank you. 
I'm really, really pleased with that. She was very nervous throughout. Um, there were a lot of people, a lot of people talking, a lot of movement down low. But yeah, very well done, Blossom. Good girl. The rosettes are piling up for Team Nicholson, but so far the top spot has eluded them. There's just one last chance, and everything hangs on Dad Roger and Farmer Kate. It's great to be back in the show ring, really, but it's a lot harder work than I remember. The sheep Roger and Kate are showing are Dutch spotted. And this competition is the big one, the champion lowland and continental breed class. Kate is up against some top flight animals, but it looks like all the prep she put in back at the farm is about to pay off. It's the perfect end to the perfect day. Today has been fabulous. Ruth's got a second with Blossom the Shire Horse. My dad's got a pile of prizes with the sheep. David's got reserve champion with Ted the Highland Bull. Hang on a minute. What about the ducks? I don't want to talk about the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here they are, the winning pair. Well, I should say the winning quartet. <laughs> Kate, Roger, who have we got here? We have Celtic Dan, who's this big lad here, and then Elite, just there. But you cleaned up, didn't you? I mean, look at the, the pile of coloured ribbons behind you there. I mean, you weren't expecting that, were you, Kate? Definitely not, but unfortunately, we do have one casualty because Dan here decided this looked quite tasty <laughs> just on the, on the show, Dave, but we were really pleased. We got championship rosette with elite and we couldn't be more proud of him for you roger you're obviously at a very different stage of your farming career to kate yes how nice is it to see people coming in sorry to talk about you as if you're not here <laughs> with as much enthusiasm as kate she's so much enthusiasm unbelievable so and she's so dedicated and, and her knowledge is really really good better apprentice than rob and dave Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, congratulations. The smiles and that clutch of ribbons clearly say it all. Who knows what beckons next year? I'm sure you'll be back in the ring uh, with even more trophies. But, yeah, well done. Now then, if you remember back to the summer, you will recall that young Reuben Owen is a whiz with mechanics. So when we heard about a new racing sport that involved getting on a machine you'd normally mow the lawn with, well, we thought he was the man to send. Ready, set, mow. If you thought lawn mowers were just for mowing lawns, then let me tell you, they're not. Flipping heck, they do move them. That is fast. Lawn mower racing is creating a bit of a buzz amongst young farmers like Ruben Owen. A kind of farming equivalent of Fight Club an underground world where secret passions play out. I've always wanted to go at this, because my mate has always talked about building one. I thought it was a good idea to come and see what it was all about before I decide whether I'll have a go at building one myself. He's in the right place. This event in Hertfordshire is the latest round in the British Championships. And here to give Ruben some tips is the Lewis Hamilton of the lawnmower himself, Peter Reeves. How you doing? Known as Pugs. Wow, that looks very fast and uh, very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty fast, I'm not going to lie. On them straights out there, how fast can you get on something like this? On a track like this, we're probably looking at speeds of about 30 to 35 mile an hour. On a bigger track, we'll get up to speeds of 50 to 55. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's pretty quick. One, one today. The British Lawnmower Racing Association was founded nearly 50 years ago in a West Sussex pub. From small beginnings, it really took off. Even racing legends like Sir Sterling Moss got involved. But then, as now, it was primarily a sport that anyone could have a go at. All you needed was your own lawnmower. 
this is what we start with. Wow, so you don't actually need very much of the original mower? No, 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 basically tin work and chassis, and then that's about it, really. So, obviously, you've got your bonnet. Bonnet and centrepiece, and then your rear wheel arch comes in underneath. Would you say this is the best base you could start with? Because obviously it's quite a wide and long. Yeah, this is a really wide mower. A good mower to race with, very stable. So this is what I should be looking for if I'm going to build one? Yeah, basically, just that you'd buy it in a mower form and then just take it all to pieces and start building from there. There are four racing types. Your classic garden mower, the roller-driven type, the wheel-driven ride-on and the big boys, the lawn tractors. No guessing which one Ruben's going to get a taste of. Any tips on what show watch out for? Yeah, first, just don't fall off. Um, second, there are a few fast guys out there. Give them some space. I think you'll be all right. And they're off. Doing too bad. Currently running third. Ruben's holding his own. Come on, Ruben! Oh, oh, nearly, nearly. Steady. Steady. He's taking those corners like a demon. Come on, Ruben! Despite Pete's encouragement, Ruben's slipping down the field and crosses the line second from last. Woo! Mate, how was that? That was absolutely amazing. Honestly, I've never raced anything like that. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you joined it. At least you, you weren't last. Well, you weren't first, but you weren't last. You were kind of second to last. Oh, well, well, well. I think it would help if your legs weren't as long, but... Yeah, well, I think you could do with a longer mower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to go back home, I'm going to get one built, and I'm going to kick your <laughs> next year. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Well, you heard it here first. Bring on the rematch. Well, you didn't think we'd let uh, Ruben have all the fun, did you? Go on, Ellen. Mine's not working. Have you nicked all the fuel? Uh, maybe. <laughs> now, they're coming out. We've got farm head chef Tim Milton. He'll be joining us talking about all things oysters and cooking. Maybe not for me, thanks. Yeah, you can also find out what happens when Tim takes a trip to Jersey. Nice helmet, by the way. See you in a few minutes' time. Come on, love. Welcome back. We are in the courtyard once again with culinary genius Tim Bilton. <laughs> you, sir. Compared, <laughs> you, sir. Compared to us, you are a culinary genius. <laughs> Good to see you, Timothy. Now then, before we get into our cooking, you've been on a little adventure, haven't you? I've been on a fabulous adventure. I've been over to Jersey to see an oyster farm, and it absolutely blew my mind. Well, should we take a closer look at what happened? Here's Tim in Jersey. There's no food that divides opinion like oysters. They truly are the marmite of the sea. So oysters are one of those things you either love them or you hate them. I'm a massive lover. I've come to Jersey to see how they gather up these tasty blighters. I was expecting a small operation, but there's oysters as far as the eye can see, all under the watchful gaze of Chris Le Mazurier. Chris. This is amazing. I have never seen anything like this in my life. Welcome to the Jersey Oyster. How many oysters have you got out here? Millions, millions. So how long are these oysters out here for before myself as a chef gets to eat these? In Jersey, because of the tidal flow and the tidal range, um, they grow very quickly, you know, 18 months to two years. Where we're standing here, in six hours' time, there'll be 10, 11 metres of water above us. So huge tidal change, nutrient-rich water. The oysters are grown from juvenile seeds spawned in France and kept in fine mesh bags to protect them from predators. So why are they on sort of tables 
So they're on steel trestles, which are just sat on the seabed, doesn't damage the seabed at all. Some of the bags just encourage good meat formation, and you end up with an equal product throughout the bag. So these bags all have to be turned now. What, by hand? By hand. We've tried mechanising it, but all of them. it doesn't work. All of them. So everything here has to be turned at least three times in a year. So when these oysters are ready then, Chris, what is the next process for these? Yeah, so the tractors and trailers will come along, we'll load them up back to the factory to be graded. Do you want to come and have a look? Yeah, I'd love to. Chris built his fully insulated processing plant in 2012 for the precious harvest. So this is where it all happens then? So these oysters have just come off the beach. And as you can see, there's different sizes in there, and badly shaped oysters as well. What we're aiming for is a deep cup shell. Yep. And then the frill, this is what's grown in the last week, the shell. Really? Yeah. You can bend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See how that's bending? It's not breaking off. So that's showing how quick they're growing. And if we go next door, I'll show you the grading process. So what's happening here now then, Chris? So these are being washed, and as you can yeah. see, there's a whole variety of different sizes. So yeah. we've got two electronic grading machines that can grade 20,000 oysters each per hour. Wow, wow. My mouth's watering just looking at all these oysters, but I have a feeling Chris is going to make me put in a shift before I get to sample any. Here you go, put, put the gloves on and you can give a hand. Right. So any small ones over there, we also take out any bad shaped ones. We don't like long oysters. Uh, dead shell, that one goes down the trap there. Too small, yeah. Chris, I'm good at this. Yeah. yeah. That's it, you're natural. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> Well, that's, that's fine, that's a good start, but you've only got another 1,000 tonnes to do between now and Christmas. <laughs> Chris and his team farm 35 hectares of oysters and export over 1,000 tonnes a year, with 80% of these going to France. But I'm hoping some might come back with me to Cannon Hall Farm. Chris, thank you so much for showing me around. Okay. While I'm here, it'd be rude not to take some of these down to the beach just to try them. No Is that all right? No thank you so much, thank you. Unbelievable. That is a thing of absolute beauty. I'm going to make it my mission to convince the oyster haters that this really is the food of love, starting with Rob and Dave. I can't wait to get these back to Cannon Hall Farm. I'm super excited. I have a few ways that I want to cook these and serve these up. These are going to be amazing. What a trip. Oh. I mean, Jersey is so close, but it does look like you've gone to the other side of the world, doesn't it? Sometimes when you get weather like that, especially. Oh, it was absolutely amazing. I, I absolutely loved it. I have to confess, I mean, I grew up in an oyster town, Colchester, very famous for its oysters. I'm not an oyster, an oyster blade. Are you an oyster girl? No. In fact, I have a valid excuse <laughs> that I'm going to duck out of this one. Oh, otherwise, I would have been right in there. Well, given that I will be missing this one out, I don't want you to be on your own. So Rob and Dave are going to taste the um, oysters for us. Bring on the taste testers. Come on, lads, gingerly. <laughs> Look at them. Uh, the blindfolds, then. What's all that about? Well, we don't want them to know what's in it. It's no fun, then, is it? <laughs> well done, you two. You well found done. your way. I mean, the blindfolds are, are a thing of beauty. I mean, Dave's gone quite sensible, and clearly you've got your granddaughter Nellie's on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's for our first foreign holiday jewels. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, oysters aren't necessarily the most attractive thing to put in your mouth. So maybe if we take away one of their senses, they'll appreciate the flavours in the same way that Tim does. Oh, look at Tim. Right, Tim is poised to go first with Dave. Now then, Dave, so you need to describe what, you, what you're tasting and, and see if you can hazard a guess as to what's been done to that oyster. Can I go? Yeah, yeah go, go on, go on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave! There's a lot of stuff there, isn't there? Yeah, what do you think, Rob? I don't know if I can do this. Is it the, text, oh, is it oh. the texture, Dave? Mm, just so much water. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Rob? I really love that. Yeah? Mm, and what, 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 you, what are you getting then? The I'm taste of the, the sea? Uh, it's like a kiss from the sea, Jules. A kiss from the sea? It's 
um, shallots, vinegar, the oyster. It's just, it's a classic, that. Really lovely. 10 out of 10. You know, that is a classic way to serve oysters with shallot vinegar, Beautiful. lemon, a little touch of Tabasco down there. David's, yes, David? I quite like that, actually, in the end. Mine needed a bit of teasing out. <laughs> <laughs> you see, in a way, I envy the boys their blindfolds. Oh. Mm. It's like Rob, oh. you've got to get your tongue well, in and loosen it out. Got the vinegar. Really nice. It's clearly quite a strong flavour. I'd say that is definitely one for the um, aficionados. Well, yeah. mm. I'm definitely getting the, the heat of the Tabasco. And actually, in fairness, not being a fish lover, quite enjoying the taste of the sea. Rob is absolutely right. Let's serve up the next so, oyster, Tim. This one is my ultimate favourite. Now, lads, I'm going to just tease you here slightly. This apparently is the ultimate right, oyster. Right, so, so this, I'm going to give you this on a, on a spoon, Rob. Oh. Right, it's oh, on a spoon, so it's just easier to... It's big, uh, so you're going to have to... Easy to eat. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Dave. In you go. Right, mate. OK, here we are. What are you getting, Rob and Dave? Lovely. Yeah? Yeah, really love it. That is an absolute treat, that. This this is one of the best meals I've had in a long time. Really lovely. Mm. Well... Oh. Do you know what? I'm a convert. A bit of, that is nice. It, this is my least favourite, I'm afraid. Okay. I'll tell you what, Jim. I think that's amazing. This is Oyster Rockefeller. You've got spinach flavoured with a little bit of nutmeg. You've got a beautiful sort of rich sort of cheese sauce over the over the oyster. And then I just finished mine off with a little herb crumb as well. So you've got that nice smoothness of the of the sauce and the oyster and a little bit of texture with that crumb. Tim, you've converted them. There's <laughs> obviously two people with impeccable taste. He liked oh, two out cheers. of three. <laughs> if I could see you, I'll throw that at you. He liked two out of three. Tim, thank you so much for going to all of this effort. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I think you have. I've loved it. And just to finish off, Jules, I've got a dirty oyster martini. Oh, just to wash it down. Take with. your mask off and have a look at this. There we are. Oh, now it's all. Oh, yeah. It's so, good. when you have a martini and you have a dirty martini, it's normally with the olive juice. Whereas this one here, this has got oyster juice in there. Oh, oh Tim, you are an absolute star. Uh, that's it for us tonight, but join us again next week when we have got more tales of the farming world from Yorkshire and across the country. And don't forget, keep sending in your pictures of what you are up to this autumn. We do love to see them and we will show them on the show. Until then, see you later. Cheers. Cheers. Get yourself one soon. Come Cheers. on, unlucky, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This week on The Farm continues new next Wednesday at 8. Uncovering secrets in the south of France, Sally Lindsay stars in the Madame Blanc Mysteries, our brand new original drama starting Saturday at nine. And tonight, from whale watching to bathing in beer, Alexander Armstrong sampling the delights of Iceland. Brandy next. <laughs>